So uh, yeah, we're going to talk about Greenlight today, but uh, to get started, for anybody that doesn't know what Green Spaces is, uh, we are a uh, 501c3 nonprofit uh, located over on Main Street, uh, at the corner of Main and Rossville, uh, kind of near Mead Loves. And uh, our mission is to advance the sustainability of living, working, and building in Chattanooga and the surrounding region. And so we do that through a series of programs. We've got we just finished actually a low impact development uh, competition and awards. Uh, did anybody here go go to that event? By chance? Yeah. <laughs> um, we basically we did it with the city, Lindhurst Foundation, River City Company. Uh, but there was a competition that was looking at handling stormwater through kind of natural elements uh, like rain gardens, bioswales, things like that. But they looked at Broad Street. Uh, back this way. Uh, Cherokee, uh, they looked at uh, Northgate Mall and uh, a site on Bonnie Oaks. Uh, and that's up on our website if you want to see the results. Uh, but we are also doing a design competition for a series of uh, net zero energy houses, which will produce as much energy as they consume. Uh, and we're going to be building those next year. So that's pretty exciting on the North Shore uh, just a little bit north of where the public is uh, almost finished. Uh, we're also working on the Georgetown University Energy Prize with the city uh, and EPB and uh, UTC and Habitat for Humanity, United Way, uh, a bunch of kind of a large consortium of uh, groups. And we're looking, we're going to be focusing on a couple uh, disadvantaged neighborhoods in Chattanooga uh, and uh, looking to reduce per capita energy consumption in these neighborhoods. We also have regular education and training, and we do sustainable consulting, uh, and we also have green light, which is what we're going to hear about today. So, and let me go ahead and introduce Chris LaCroix. Uh, he is our uh, program director for Greenlight. So, if you do have any follow-up questions about Greenlight or want to get involved, he's your, he's your guy. We have a video, you know how videos and presentations try to work. Once 
you know, you, if you're in your, in your company, move on. This commitment is still there, and it's going to get handed down. Um, so, and then you can also capture energy and water savings. That's a real selling point to, to companies um, that, you know, the word is business, so they're interested in the bottom line. So this, this program is designed to help capture energy and water savings. Um, also have employee recruiting and retention. There's a lot of younger employees today that are valuing a sustainably operating company to come work for. And uh, Greenlight would allow companies to uh, market themselves better to new recruits as well as hold on to them longer. I know myself, I have left companies for similar reasons that just seem to be not on board and lagging behind the trends. Uh, is anyone familiar with a rating system? It's a green building rating system called LEED. Leadership and energy and environmental design, right? In the environment. In the environment, yeah. Design? I should know that. Uh, and they have similar programs. Um, a lot of them cater towards the construction itself and the design concepts, but they do have one for existing buildings and operations and maintenance. However, uh, it's kind of exclusive depending on certain parameters about your company, um, and it can be cost prohibitive. So for instance, if you lease uh, or rent your space and you can't alter your building's ventilation system or your landscaping, then tough luck for you, you just can't do the whole thing. Uh, so Greenlight is structured in such a way that, well, if you can't touch your ventilation system or your landscaping well, let's figure out what can you do within that. Can you install a programmable thermostat? All right, well, that's a plus. Um, so why exclude you from the entire program just because, you know, you can't change your irrigation system? Um, and another reason for green light is uh, other rating systems tend to involve uh, more of a capital investment up front for larger improvements. And Greenlight is striving to recognize things that some companies are already doing and some simple things that don't involve capital investment at all, just to shift in the way you think. And then a lot of companies are hearing this, this we need to go green, let's go green, let's be more sustainable on this push from their employees or from their customers, but they just don't know where to begin. So Greenlight gives them the structure to start it off. So, a little bit about the structure. You do not have to change your business model. That's the first and foremost point. Uh, there are a variety of tasks, approximately 70, around that number. Um, there are some that are prerequisites, which are mandatory, and some that are credits, which are optional. And I'll talk a little bit more about those uh, in a little bit here. The way that a participant in the program will uh, document that what they're doing is all online, it's all web-based, and uh, if anyone has ever worked with LEAD before, uh, Michael and myself have worked a lot with it, it can be a very confounding process working online, and we're pretty happy with the web user interface that we've developed in terms of being friendly and understandable. Um, there's also, one of the big things about Greenlight is that we're looking for quantifiable metrics. So not just having lofty pie in the sky ideas about how green is good for the earth, because that's great, but we also want some tangible numbers. You know, uh, business owners respond to, we're going to help you save this much money when you change out your lighting system. You know, uh, not that there's gonna be less smog in the air. Uh, so there's gonna be a series of surveys that we ask the people to complete, um, different numbers for each one, different number of questions. And the surveys will help us get that quantifiable data. Anything from you know, how much money are you spending on your electricity bill, how much gas, how much on your gas bill, to uh, what's your employee's comfort level um, in your office, their thermal comfort, their, their visual comfort, their access to views, how do, they, how do they experience your workplace, and what can we do to change that? Um, just to speed things up, let's kind okay. of skim over the, the credit um, sure. Part. Um, but this is, yeah. Okay, talk about that. So there's eight categories you can see here. Uh, the, the structure is set up under environmental literacy, green cleaning, staff participation. I'm not going to read all these out. 
verbatim, but those are the overarching eight categories. Uh, within each one, there's prerequisites and credits. So this is some examples within each one. Um, for instance, the first category has three required prerequisites. There's no credits, so you have to do all three. But usually they don't involve any kind of cost. So for example, the very first prerequisite is making an ego policy. And that's a formal written commitment that documents everything that you're about to attempt for the green light program. Um, green cleaning, also no credits, five required prerequisites. Uh, so create a green cleaning policy, integrated pest management, those are both examples. Integrated pest management just strives to use the least toxic chemicals possible if you have to use chemicals at all. So it's kind of rearranging how you think about what's done in your office. A lot of people don't even know when their termite services or pest services come in. So it involves some phone calls and a little homework on the back end. Let's just kind of skim over the next couple ones okay. and go to the reporting okay. tool. We've got like four minutes. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Oh, no, it's okay. Staff participation, yeah. um, employee wellness program, no smoking. Believe it or not, some offices still have smoking. Uh, yeah, Chris actually met with some people who were interested in smoking. They were like, mind. just smoking in the office. Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> and you did like, not know that was legal. <laughs> uh, who knew? He's like, mad <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, perfect. <laughs> Purchasing policies having to do with uh, products that you routinely consume on a daily basis, not necessarily what you make, but also involving that too. More about what you consume just to get your business done. Uh, utility efficiency is a large category um, as that has a lot of impact on sustainability in terms of how much good you can do and what kind of cost savings you can experience. There's also a couple subdivisions within it. Um, that we've structured based off sort of a difficulty to achieve as well as um, financial commitment. Waste reduction and recycling, um, just something I haven't mentioned. You know, there are prerequisites, but the credits, uh, I mean, they're optional. Some are optional. Um, it's kind of a loose structure, so for instance, you can pick four or seven credits. In transportation, you can pick six of 12 credits. So you have a little flexibility in terms of what fits your company. So, as I mentioned, the reporting is all done online. Uh, there is our website, greenlightchattery.com. And uh, just before I talk about that, in terms of the certification process, you're, you're not just uploading documents to a website and that's it. You know, it, it is somewhat merit based on, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, verified? Self-verified, yeah. Um, I'm going to come out to the job site and walk around or to your office and make sure that you're doing what you say which is another thing that the lead rating system doesn't necessarily do. Um, they'll audit some projects, but we want a little more accountability. accountability. So this is a, a shot from our website. Um, and you'll see that uh, there's a couple things at the top. Finding a green light business, so that's the directory that will allow you to sort and filter and companies can put in information about themselves. And so that's kind of like the gateway for consumers to find Greenlight certified businesses. Uh, so once this kind of gets to a critical mass where people are really looking for it, they can go on here and say, oh, where's a restaurant that's Greenlight certified uh, or, you know, an architecture firm or whatever. And I didn't, I didn't, this is a screenshot again, so I can't scroll down or anything, but at the bottom um, there is a tiles of all participating companies. So it's advertising for the company that's participating. Um, here's an example of the participant guide. This is really word dense. You don't have to use this unless you're interested in the, or read it unless you're interested in the program. But it has the, the specific details of each one of those credits or prerequisites. Um, let you know the ins and outs of what's going on. And it's also where you would eventually upload you know, any, any information or um, type of what you what you were doing. You can see right here there's file uploaders, text box, and checks, checklists and stuff. Indicate if you're pursuing it or not and, and submit it. Um, this is the members area where the survey is accessed 
a checklist, what your submission status is, because you can progressively submit things. It's not all a final submit button, although there is that at the end. So you can get feedback as you go. And you can communicate with me asking questions. And then, as I mentioned before, the finding a green light company. Uh, this is an example of what website visitors can see. Um, so you can see that, and this is still under construction right now, but uh, the crash pad and the flying squirrel are in here, as well as the green spaces. And it'll indicate if the green light's certified or not. It's the one in Fort Oak. What's that? What's the one in Fort Oak? That's the web developer. <laughs> this is when we were this is when we were testing it out. <laughs> awesome. He just threw himself in that category. Yeah. Yeah. You see, green light, green spaces has the green light symbol. So we're we're not green light certified. Yeah, <laughs> we're just making sure it works. Um, so cost? That's a big question. It's based on the number of full time employees that you have, uh, and if you're a member of Green Spaces or not. Green Spaces membership is five hundred dollars. So you can see there is. A little bit of cost savings. That is way cheaper than lead. Yeah, way cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> way cheaper. Way a lot more accessible. Yeah. Uh, and then you'll see there's an existing certification, recertification. So if you already have a lead certified building, it's a lot less work for us. So it's a lot less money for you. Um, and then on an ongoing basis, annually, there will be a recertification process. And these are just some of the pilot companies as well as the new participating companies around town and that is pretty much it you guys can check out the website go to the green spaces if you got any more questions yeah um, yeah good talk by the way my uh, father-in-law is actually a lead certification engineer um, are you guys interested in working with them, kind of like collaborating and complementing, or do you see yourself as like, like you said, late is exclusive and, and expensive, he knows that, that's why he goes after like big businesses that are mm -hmm. in there in the middle of new construction. Um, but are you planning to like partner with or complement that kind of thing? I think that, I think that uh, Greenlight is a good starting point for companies yeah. that are interested in heading that direction. Lead is a big thing to, a big bite to take. You know, it's a 300 page manual versus our 40 page manual. Yeah. Um, so I think that our Greenlight process will complement getting towards lead certification. It's not necessarily meant to rival it, it's meant to be mm -hmm. more accessible from the get-go. Exactly right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a Chattanooga based program only or are you wanting to grow this regionally or? I mean, it's definitely, you know, born and bred in Chattanooga and focused on Chattanooga. Yeah. I can imagine at some point that other people might want to do it in their own city. Uh, there are similar programs in other cities. There's a similar program like in, in D.C. and uh, I think uh, Austin. Uh, so it's not, the idea isn't unique to Chattanooga, but all of the specifics are, are, you know, developed by green spaces. Uh, but I mean, certainly, green spaces itself doesn't have an interest in uh, kind of applying it to other cities and administering it. But we're happy to kind of, you know, let somebody else use it. We'll certainly be targeting like Hamilton County. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not going really to limit it to yeah. just the Chattanooga area, but uh, yeah, but it's definitely catered towards Chattanooga. So from the pilots that you've done, do you have data on like how much a company saved since they've started doing the program? So we have more, when our predecessors did the pilot, they didn't set up the same survey that Chris and I developed for this, that has those very kind of detailed, specific like how much energy you're using now, and then let's check that again at the end. So it's more anecdotal, um, but for instance, just as, an example, the hunter over the course of five years saved $75,000 uh, on utility expenses from making these kinds of minor adjustments. Uh, so there's definitely a huge amount of potential, especially for people that have, you know, a lot of demand. Uh, you know, if, if you're a small office, you know, you're not going to save $75,000. But uh, that's just an example of some of the potential. 
the tenth program. And like 212 Market uh, is a new participant that I didn't have on the slide, but um, they've been doing you know, green practices for a long time, and yeah. they, they tout that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have photovoltaics, solar panels installed on their building um, that generate a substantial percentage of their energy uh, produced. And I imagine that those photovoltaics have paid themselves all oh, yeah. several times over already. So I mean, there are there are tangible, real savings associated with going green. It's not it's not just tree hugging stuff. You know? <laughs> How does the certification process work when you've got a, um, for instance, I own a business, but I have a landlord that owns our building. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. how does that, that work? Or, or some examples of that's exactly that? That's exactly one of the situations that drove the development of Greenland. So, mm -hmm. you know, it would be basically impossible for you to do a, a full lead rating system mm -hmm. uh, for your existing office inside another building. Mm -hmm. Greenlight is going to focus on your operations. Uh, and so it's going to look at what you have control over. And then Chris will basically work with you. Uh, yeah, and um, from people that I've been meeting with so far, it's, it entails things, you know, I say, well, you're going to have to give your building manager a call. Let's yeah. find out what you are allowed to do and what you aren't allowed to do. Um, for instance, we want you to have an integrated pest management program. So you can call your building owner and let's find out who is your pest management service provider, and let's have a conversation with them. Uh, a lot of them will have you know, more eco-friendly options. They might already be doing it, we don't know. So it, there's a lot of homework on the back end in terms of if you're renting and leasing a space to finding out what the building manager and, and maintenance personnel are, are already doing. Um, but if there's certain things that you just are not allowed to do because you don't own the building, then that's that's where a green light can bend and work with you and try to figure out what, what else can you do. And if you, can't, if you can't do any of the utility efficiency credits, then let's target one of the areas that you can do more so, like purchasing policies. Who yeah. does the evaluations? Um, yeah. Myself. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. What, what are your ideas as far as marketing and getting, uh, getting this into the, the mindset of the average consumer or the average Joe walking down the street. Yeah. Um, so we're definitely building a brand here, yeah. a branding, you know, that's banking a lot off green spaces right now. Uh, people don't know the word green light, but I think green spaces has been around long enough to where they're starting to recognize the name. Um, so one of the prerequisites, actually, the very first credit categories is let us know how you're going to market this to your customers and, uh, and communicate that, to think about it ahead of time. So we want people to be working on helping promote promote the idea itself. So you know, at bare minimum, the logo, the, the door logo that you get upon certification um, looks like that. Looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like the logo. And uh, and using that logo on your website, you know, do you want to announce to your to your public, to your customers that you're pursuing Greenlight or that you're just certified once you are certified? And I think it's a good idea to say that you pursue it. We're doing that on our website letting people know who's pursuing who's actually certified and distinguishing the two. Um, and yeah, just to give a shout out, Bantam actually did some work with us on uh, the, the marketing side. Oh no, she did some of the Yeah, yeah. Um, also the, the green light directory for businesses will allow website visitors to, to search and you know, with specific criteria to find a green company, a green light certified company. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be a map, and I guess in my head, my vision with this map is you slowly got more and more green light companies popping up on the map, and uh, I'm trying to build a green light district. What about uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> green light district? So that's kind of where I see it. Yeah, marketing <laughs> potential. But then there will be once we get the uh, kind of a critical mass, we're going to do a bigger public push. Yeah. Uh, but we don't want to do that before we have the kind of critical mass of certified businesses. What about a directory of, of like environmentally friendly service providers, like a, a shredding company that recycles that kind of thing? So that's, you could do an Angie's list. For we've, we've got the, a couple different options for that. I yeah. mean, for Greenlight specifically, we have uh, essentially preferred vendors yeah. that are built into the program and built into that rating system or yeah. into that guide yeah. so that uh, 
you basically, you know, here's your credit, let's say energy audits. Uh, you know, you can get a free energy audit from EPB, but also EES, which is one of the Green Spaces member, does energy audits and they're also a contractor, so they can make specific recommendations, show you the payback period, and then come in and actually do the work. It's too. interesting that EPB will for free to show you how to use less of their product. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I mean, it reduces a little bit of yeah. systems and management. Right? Yeah, and so, I mean, EPB basically pays by their, like, maximum load each month. Oh, does they pay TBA? Yeah. yeah, so they, they are basically purchasing from TBA based on their peak load. Gotcha. So if they can trim that down, they save money. But, yeah. So, and, and I'm trying to meet with the companies that we think could be, you know, viable uh, preferred vendors. For instance, RBS, Reliable Building Solutions, is a, a green cleaning service provider that Top notch around town, they, they have their act together for sure. So, when people are like, I don't do green clean, and they have top them. Um, but they do have to be a member of green spaces, so there is that one caveat to become a preferred vendor. What are you all's current needs? Like, how can you help this community or you know, help you know, fill some gaps? Yeah, I mean, so obviously, if anybody's interested in participating, uh, you know, let us know and, and we can sign you up and get you started. Um, but then beyond that is just, you know, tell the people you work with, uh, kind of spread the word about it. Uh, it's, I think that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, I think so. Letting letting people know, especially companies that you think might be good, yeah, good uh, yeah. targets, more or less, about the website, just in general. Because um, it's got all the information on there where they can find out a little bit more. And if they want, they can say, I'm interested, you know, and then I'll set them up. Yeah, and feedback too, like on the website. On you yeah, know, if you guys check out the website and you know have some comments about how it could be better, let us know. Mm -hmm. Have you considered giving a discount to nonprofits, churches, those kind of organizations? Not so much. <laughs> it's already a pretty discounted program in my mind. Yeah, um, compared to other programs like this. Yeah. So I don't think we have considered that. Um, but if you're a member of Green Spaces, you get a discount and the membership brings with it its own values, you know? Okay. And there is actually a discount for Green Spaces membership for yeah. nonprofits. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Do you know that? Uh, yeah. How much is a Green Spaces membership? So the corporate memberships start at 500, but for government and nonprofit, that starts at 200. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. You mentioned uh, pest control. Is there also one for the landscaping? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is an entire landscaping uh, credit. I mean, category with I don't know, probably eight credits within that. It's involving um, capturing rainwater, redirecting downspouts, uh, green infrastructure, things like bioswales, things that um, will reduce the stormwater runoff quantity and improve the quality of what does. And that's a a big item coming up in Chattanooga. We've got a new yeah. um, set of guidelines called uh, Resource Rain mm -hmm. uh, being pushed down from the EPA that is going to be changing. A lot. Is that also like weed, like how you spray for weeds and stuff like that as well? There is a credit for that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's why Flying Squirrel did that, those pavers, right? Exactly. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's Pervious, that's exactly right. Yeah, pervious pavers. So that the water can go into the ground rather than running into the storm. They just, well, they actually won an award at our yeah. LRB, uh event. That because they really went above and beyond what they had to do. Yeah. So, but they, they don't put the green light logo, they don't put any logo on their doors or anything, do they? They're not certified yet. Yeah. They're not certified. They just started. Okay. Yeah. So, all the people up there, we don't have any certified businesses yet. Still in Rio. We just have uh, participants, basically. Because this was just actually the, the reporting into the website was just completed. Uh, so, yeah. mm -hmm. so does, does LEED have tax advantages? No. And then would Greenlight? So we've actually talked to the city about uh, setting up some incentive programs and there's some strong interest there. The city is has a sustainability director starting on Friday and so we're going to be working with him uh, to help drive some of that. So hopefully in the future there different, will be some... Different municipalities may have programs for credits or something. So I mean like for LEED and I think like what you were talking about too. So people just opt in to lead? Is that, is that they just decide it's that they want to do that? So there's a couple different reasons. One is the just the third party verification. I think we're over time, so if anybody needs to go, uh, feel free to go. But um, 
So some people will do it because of the kind of third party verification of high performance building. Mm -hmm. So like GSA, Department of Defense, you know, a lot of the institutional clients will require lead because of it essentially guarantees them a better performing building. Uh, other people do it because of the brand. Uh, so, you know, environmental nonprofits, uh, you know, kind of progressive companies will get, will do lead certification, uh, you know, because it's an outward expression of what's important to them. Right. So, Volkswagen, Alstom, you know. Pro. Yeah, exactly. Crash pad, pad, shield, crash pad. You know, it's, it's, it's more about uh, the message and the brand and the value behind that. Yeah. Um, and so there's a, a, a range of reasons why people will do lead. Um, and it's a great product. I mean, I've, I've worked on the USGBC's headquarters in DC. Uh, and so I'm a big supporter of, of pursuing lead with, if you can. And that's why, you know, Greenlight, if somebody's interested in doing like lead for existing buildings, this is a great way to start that and kind of lay the groundwork and then go for lead. And, Actually, one of the prerequisites is loading your uh, utility data into Energy Star's portfolio manager, and that's also a first step for lead in terms of tracking your, your energy usage. So, great. Are you, are you looking for lead engineers interested in working with them in the area, surrounding states, that kind of thing, or is that not, not really? Not really. Okay. No. Um, we don't do very much lead consulting. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, I think we used to when we started when Green Spaces. Well, we had a lead started. incentive program yeah. that basically yeah. paid people to, to get lead certified. Yeah. Or, or to get buildings uh, lead certified. Yeah. Lead I was just wondering like, if, if people ask for referrals after going through your program, if you, if you would refer them to. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Especially, I mean, and, uh, I think a Green, a green Spaces membership mm -hmm. would be a good idea yeah. for somebody like that to get in front of yeah. those people. But yeah, I thank you everybody for uh, coming.